Welcome to Consciousness Caffeine Radio. I'm Rainbow Warrior Goddess Lisa and my co-host. Brett Star, the debt master. Good evening. <laughs> How are you all doing? I'm excellent. I'm most rocksome actually considering this has been a really challenging period of Mercury retrograde this year. But um, today our show is about um, freedom and not just about freedom, but going beyond money. Imagine a world without money with Colin Turner. Um, he's been a guest of mine before on the old platform. Um, I've followed his work. Um, he is a 48 year old author, musician and social activist from Dublin, Ireland, um, who now resides in Spain. Um, but I'll let him tell his story. Um, he, he, the author, the book is called uh, F Day, The Second Dawn of Man. And it's his debut novel, which entered the US Kindle top 100 within days of its release. Colin is already a well-known social activist and founder of the popular initiative, The Free World Charter, uh, whose link you'll be able to, you can find and see down in the information for the show, uh, which calls for a radical redesign of our culture and shift in social priorities. The charter has garnered support from over 55,000 members since its release five years ago. He has, found, he has also founded a number of other popular online altruistic initiatives, most notably Honor Pay, a virtual award and appreciation network, and Free Worlder, a blog forum for followers of the open economy idea and from where he also blogs. Colin's ideas for an open economy are the main subject of his writings and activism. The principal tenet of the open economy concept is evolving beyond the traditional market system into a new era of greater collaboration and efficient use of technology to create a better and more sustainable world for all to enjoy. Colin's free world charter sets out 10 basic principles upon which to operate such a society, involving shifting priorities back towards nature and community. Currently living in Malaga, Spain, Colin also spends a lot of time playing music and composes for the music production company Remusique and plays a regular live shows along the Costa del Sol in Spain. With that, I'd love to welcome you to the show here, Colin. Hi! Wow, that's a very, a very impressive sounding introduction there. I hope I can manage. To, I hope I can live up to it. I'm kind of, it sounds like a sounds like a, you're a hearing about somebody else or somebody really famous. But, but oh, no, it's uh, just you. You are one busy dude. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. I, I I think I remember writing that uh, bio, or somebody wrote that bio for me some years ago. I haven't actually uh, heard it recited like that in a while. It sounds very impressive. So well done. That's you made me sound very very impressive. <laughs> well, I think you are very very impressive, but also very very humble, which is love, one of the lovely. Well, I hope I can live. I hope I can live up to that. Uh, the only <laughs> the only slight error thing. I'm actually unfortunately I'm 49 now instead of 48. But other than that, everything else is correct. So um, yes, yes. So, um, thank you for having me on, Lisa. It's lovely to be on the show. And hi, hi to you, Brett. I know you're you're watching in there from nice from you. Perth. And yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's good. It's lovely and warm here. And Malaga, Spain. Yeah, we're having a very nice, uh, very nice, easy, relaxing, easygoing life here. Um, yes, I have been very busy. I'm generally uh, a busy bee for the last five or six years, um, promoting alternative ideas. Um, mostly around um, just the market system and uh, I suppose it probably coming from an early deep-seated belief that there was something um, fundamentally unfair about the way we kind of operated our society. <laughs> yes, and I think, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I know. And I think that these things, they don't really, for most people, you don't, um, you don't really become proactive on these unless it's actually affecting you directly. Exactly. And uh, one of, one of the things, um, certainly for for myself as a musician, um, who was uh, I've always like in my early adult life, of trying to promote myself as a musician, and um, it's this is extremely hard thing to do nowadays to actually um, to be able to make a career from your own writing music, for example. Mm -hmm. So I suppose this is what really was kind of slowly over time, kind of railroading me into kind of um, a way of thinking that kind of that. You know, the, there's this one thing that I was extremely passionate about from an early age and from early adulthood was something that I was I wasn't going to be able to uh, conceivably make a career out of. You know, and this was uh, for me was fundamentally unfair because something that I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I suppose this this naturally led me in towards this kind of uh, an alternative viewpoint. And then, of course, we have the likes of um, the Zeitgeist movie series, which you might be familiar with, from Peter Joseph yes. and. Uh, yeah, Venus Project. All these things kind of came into view, uh, sort of around the in the internet around uh, 2010, 2011, and uh, there was a kind of a big shift starting to happen. The Occupy movement, the banking crash, and all these kind of things. So there's a whole confluence of 
of events and circumstances that really um, propelled me, I suppose, into wanting to do something myself, you know? Uh-huh. And while, while I liked the, a lot of the stuff that I was reading from the Zeitgeist Movement and uh, the, the Venus Project, who were like presenting a world without money, which to me was completely uh, uh, revolutionary, you know, at that time. You know, it was some, something I had never considered. I had been in business for many years, so it was some, not something I had ever even considered at all. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to uh, put my own sort of um, uh, to, to one of the things that I for the Venus Project, for example, which you're probably familiar with. One of the things that I didn't like about that, and what a lot of people that I I was sp speaking with didn't like about it, was that it was too futuristic looking. It was too technological. It was too cybernated. Too much uh, automation, and it just looked a bit a little bit uh, ugly or maybe undesirable. So. Uh, I think I think technology is great, but um, I don't necessarily want to live in an entirely automated uh, city either because you know, obviously yeah. it's, it's still nice to work. It's still nice to do things together. These things are important too. So I felt that there's, uh, something like the Venus Project was kind of losing sight of the, the natural touch and the, uh, the community uh, idea, you know, uh, really kind of trying to leverage everything on technology. So um, really, with that, I've, I kind of came up with the idea of um, creating a, like a charter, which is like a ten point, ten point um, principles, ten of ten principles of, uh, of how to create a society without money by shifting those priorities. And if you look at it, the the Free World Charter website, which has got lots of support, um, you'll see that the the principles are basically about realigning ourselves with nature, about re-emphasizing the importance of all life, not just human life. And of course, not just Western civilization life, but all human life as one yeah. as one basically uh, large network, one community of humans. And then obviously realizing that we are part of a community of beings in the world, and of course that everything is in, is connected. I mean, really, it's revolutionary. I mean, if you a smart six year old could figure this out for themselves, you know, it's just that we've got them so lost. <laughs> yes, and they got so, so lost with this with the system that's pulled us so far away from actually what is natural, what's real, and what is what is really best for us. Exactly. That really that it really does need reiterating to kind of say, okay, well let's we are part of nature. Let's face the fact that we are part of nature. We're part of a, a community of humans. And that the best way of conducting our society is really just through, through cooperating, because obviously competing is ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, then aside from all that, then, you know, competing with, uh, with technology becomes extremely dangerous because we have this huge, massive power at our disposal. You know, we can make, we can do enormous damage very easily and uh, to each other and to our environment. So we have to really use that power responsibly. Exactly. So that's really what the, the charter is about. It's bas basically about describing like like ten points of really want to conduct a good society that works for everyone and that's going to work in, in long term future. And these are really the ten uh, points that we should be um, using as a basic uh, minimum set of requirements. You know? No, I get it. And if you recall, I found your charter and signed it way back in the very beginning when you were under like five thousand signatures. Wow, um, what, how many people have signed it now? It's at the um, it's just, bio. It's That's old though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's almost fifty-seven thousand people. Um, wow. But yeah, this it's it's great. Yeah, this um, we've but we've kind of reached a point now. I'll get back to I'll get to the books in a minute. But um, we've reached a point because this is a natural progression from the charter. We've reached a point now where um, like there's a few of us working on this. Now, of course, not just me. And uh, we've reached a point where we have decided that. The charter on its own, just as a as a, an aspirational document, is not really enough to keep yeah. to to propel the, the movement forward. So what we've done is we've decided to we've decided to push into um, a network called the Free World or Network. This is what we've just started in the last few months, which yeah. is basically a, a network founded on the principles of the charter of people like you and me or anyone around the world who can basically start giving and getting items and services. And accommodation and lifts and tool sharing freely. It's basically like um, I don't know if you imagine a, a virtual library of skills and goods of everyone around the world. Excuse me. This is what we're just getting started with now. There's plenty. So we have. Um, there's. I'm in Prague right now, and there's a lot of people in Prague. 
I was I was like, wow, because as soon as I registered for the new site, the new link, and updated my account from the old one, I'm like, oh, yeah. wow, look at all the free worlders in Prague. <laughs> it's <laughs> yes, awesome. that's great. Well, a lot of the a lot of the people that you you will see on the map of the site on freeworlder.com, there will be people who signed the charter, and not not all of them have actually activated their accounts into the new network, but but they're kind of they're we're, we're getting people are are activating them uh, gradually. So what's the the point is there that um, we want to put the the ideas of the charter into action. We want to um, start promoting sharing because really. No matter what way you the cookie crumbles, or what way you think about how a better society is going to is going to happen, it's not going to happen until we change our habits, our very yeah. simple basic habits. And uh, the, the first among that is sharing, because obviously we're so ingrained with the competitive um, self interest thing that uh, we it's sharing is is absolutely um, counterintuitive now to our society. It's it's something that we think is like we're losing out by sharing, or that it's um, it's it's a weak thing to do, so uh, this is completely um, you know uh, counter to the way the world should be. You know because obviously it's a finite amount of resources, and we, again we have this massive power and technology at our disposal that we have to really use responsibly. You know, and uh, and we're not using that responsibly. So um, yeah, so the the point is with the the free world thing is is starting to try and change those habits to try and get people into the simple acts of sharing. It doesn't have to be anything. Fantastic, you know, you can share a cup, you can share something. The point is that it starts changing the habits and while it's very small now and very humble now, the people are, who, who are probably hard pressed like you or me, they don't have much cash or money things to offer, but we, if we're starting to share these things a small way, that as confidence grows in that idea, then people yeah. can start sharing larger items, more things, mm. um, and things that are that are more have more um, value, you know. So this is this is where we're at. We're at a, we're at a like um, yeah. we're at a very much at a crawling stage, you know, because we this is this is where we do. We yeah, have to you need to crawl right now because what you actually yeah. done is launch an official gift economy online. Mm -hmm. yeah. it is baby. Yeah. Peter Joseph's was more resource based, but yours is a complete yeah. gift economy. And uh, Charles Eisenstein wrote a great book on the um, social yeah. and economics. Yeah. Um, but a gift economy and it's valid and and also even the honor pay system it's about just mm -hmm. honoring someone because mm -hmm. literally uh, l like you Brett and I all three of us um, and many others we know uh, donate a tremendous amount of our time and service to create things to try to help create sustainable yeah. solutions for all the many challenges we face on the planet I mean even what you yeah. were just saying about the technology for example you know the world free what most people don't even have in their consciousness either is that we actually have the capacity for free energy system, not needing to transfer to green economies, which is just another gridable one, but that that actual technology, but it's not the technology, it's the consciousness using it. Instead, they use it to take down the Twin Towers in 9-11, instead of giving the world, you know, using it to clean up all the damage that, that all the corporate pirates have done to our earth all over, all the oil spills and the, you know, the toxicities and the, mm -hmm. the poisons and the chemtrails, and they can utilize mm -hmm. it to create um, free energy mm -hmm. for our houses and really go off a grid, but they won't let us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's about creating people to think that, why, hey, why isn't it free? Why are the, we the only species of sentient mm -hmm. beings on the planet that believes and buys the deal that we have to pay I mean, just with the yes, of course. Yeah. Mm, yeah, of course. Don't forget that. I mean, all all energy is free anyway. You know, I mean, you whatever type form of energy you care to mention, whether it's like a quantum generator or a hydroelectric station or, or nuclear power, yeah. it's all free. We don't have to. But the problem is not that it's not free. The problem is that it's monopolized, and it's more about the people who own the grid and the cables. That's the that's the that's where it's locked down really more so than the. Than the than the yeah. thing, but of course, yeah. I mean, solar power is doing really good, coming back really, really strong now, and uh, getting more and more efficient. So, I mean, it's, there's no absolutely no doubt, Lisa and Brett, that the the writing is on the wall anyway for the current system. Even if people like me or you or Peter Joseph didn't exist, I mean, the the writing is on the wall that basically this just can't keep going the way it is, you know, because technology yeah. is going to get cheaper. It's going to get easier to have your own electricity at home. You won't need to plug into a power supply. Um, and obviously, it's it's getting much easier to make things. You know, like cars, for example, are they're much much easier to make now than even twenty or thirty years ago. So yeah, everything gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper.
But of course, because we still have this mindset that you know we need growth, we need jobs, we need all this sort of stuff that we're we're, we're really like brainwashed into. Um, that we mm -hmm. we're still kind of locked ourselves in that mindset. That yeah. and, uh, and of course, then you have yeah. the thing, the likes of technology like your iPhones or whatever, like there's these pieces of technology, which is nothing more than a piece of glass and a few bits of sand inside, you know, and it's really, and these things like are, are nearly a, a thousand euros for something, but probably, I don't know, I don't know what the stats are, but probably one of these iPhones is probably, you could probably make it for 10 or 20 euros or something like that, you know, it's probably so, it's on the free market. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the invisible hand. Yeah. Here's where I'd like to bring in Brett because Brett is uh, really educated and schooled um, in uh, finance and money and this conversation, how do we go beyond money because we're taught about the value of money when the money that we use, the, I, I, we call, I call them the federal fraudulent reserve notes in the US, but um, all the paper money is a debt instrument. It's not, doesn't have value, it's, not, it's a fiat money, it's not based by um, anything that has value like gold or silver. Um, and Brett's, uh, I'll let I'll let Brett go here with you. But it's about getting. We think that everything has to grow to be good, but no, this is it's unsustainable. And the only thing that's growing is inflation and how much we're being robbed and how much there's no more resources to share, being put out. The thought of lack, the scarcity consciousness, the poverty consciousness. When there's that. infinite abundance here, like Brett, Brett, you take this because well, it I gets think, in. I think you know, all about cryptocurrency and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I, th I think um, actually I think that's what I love about this whole concept about money and currency and um, you know being a simple thing that that it's really not there and it's just a number on a piece of paper that I'm telling you that it's worth a hundred dollars and you taking it off me is is actually once you grab grab hold of it is absolutely a like it's amazing that, like it's the the, the, the magician's best um, a job ever like there is no smoke and mirrors i'm just handing it to you and i'm looking at you going here you go and you're going yes thank you very much yeah absolutely and, i mean and, it's um, uh, it's it's the it's the world's greatest shared belief it's um it's absolutely a religion in every sense of the way it's not there's no it's not it's not a it's not similar to a religion it is religion it's it, in every single way it's it's something that we all believe in and it's 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 probably by far the most successful religion because we all obviously more or less believe the same thing of its of its yeah. value of its intrinsic value so uh, but absolutely it's based on on nothing whatsoever on the fact that you or i agree that a piece of paper with a hundred written on it is worth a hundred something <laughs> that's all there is to it you know so uh, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. So, of course, when you start to unravel that, yeah, it, uh, it's, things kind of start to unravel very quickly. But again, as, I, stre as I, st I must stress, as I said earlier, that you don't, you know, I don't think you really begin to unravel the things unless you're hurting yourself, unless it's, it's biting you in some way that the system, you know, because obviously if I'm a, you know, a stockbroker and I'm whatever, making 10 grand a week or something like that, I'm probably not going to be too worried about, you know, where does money come from? Or I'm just going to be too busy in my jet ski and uh, in Monte Carlo and having a, having a nice time. So, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I, you are the crazy one. Yeah, it needs to bite before you, you, you start to unravel. So, obviously, that was, for me, as I say, as a, being a, music, a struggling musician, I suppose, that was the way it, it bit me. So, um, but here we are. We're, we're we're getting there. We're we're all getting. We're 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 building up in numbers a hell of a lot. You know, there's so many people around the world want this. One of the uh, of course is is because everything is still so dictated by money in terms of the um, the way of, well, of promotion and advertising. These are extremely powerful forces in the world. You know, promotion and advertising, yeah. and of course because we're all. Well, we don't, we're broke basically, and we're all kind of a, a, a believing in a world without money. Then it becomes that we're it's it's a real David and Goliath. You know, we're trying to promote ideas by talking there and stuff like that on Facebook, and then you have uh, companies that are just spending billions on promotion and just brainwashing people and repeating and repeating and stuff. So it's it's yeah. a hell of it's a hell of a it's a hell of a, a task we have, you know. But we're getting there. Absolutely. Question: Do you run run into the uh, issue and I see it different places there's there's two major disbeliefs or there's two major beliefs of people that I think are false and one of them that you know if, if it doesn't cost a lot it doesn't have any value you know if you give things away for free then they have no value on the other flip side of that a lot of people have the ridiculous belief that just because it costs more 
it has more value or it's better quality. Like yeah, for example, um, you know, yeah. just use like organic Wine. shampoo, all the natural holistic shampoos. They're not, you know, um, labeled or uh, pretty much told, told you what's really going on and they're not, there's no checks and balances, but you can go buy them. One of the most expensive brands is this Jason brand and they still have 5% of the toxic chemicals in it. So yeah. it's pointless. It's not really organic. You know, and they charge a lot more, and then the people are making the authentic product. Yeah, but what you have to, you have to say for, for any product, okay, of of whatever value of money, you have to equate what is the what is the value of what you're buying. If if you pay twenty euros for something or twenty dollars for something, or you can pay fifty dollars for something, what is the difference between the fifty dollar one and the twenty dollar one? More than likely. More than likely, it's just going to be some some other sort of layer of belief or something like that that you believe this one has a better thing, or this one has been sold to you better, or it's got a nicer package, or it's got a beautiful yeah. girl on the outside, or something like that. <laughs> so it's like there's there's like um, well, you know, there are the the value system that we I mean we operate everything through this ridiculous arbitrary value system, and as you correctly point out. When you when you try to give something away for free nowadays, people say, "No, this is crap. This is this is obviously no good." So their their I suppose their instinct is, "Well, they obviously weren't able to sell it, so they're going to give it away for free or something like that." So, yeah. I also the point is that a lot yeah. of people are guarded because they think if you're trying to give anything away for free, you're really just trying to yeah. sell something you don't want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a long sell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, we have this. Um, we have this uh, very um, complex sort of uh, value slash belief or belief in value of things, which is kind of really, it's kind of messed up or our, just our, distorting our worldview. So we don't see the true, true, the true value in things, you know, which everything does have a, a true and intrinsic value, like your, your relationships have value or your trees have a, have a value, but you can't really put a number to them. You know, they're just, uh, they're things that, Hey, like, hey, this is important, or hey, this is good, and that's pretty much all this thing. Where money tries to say, well, this is a hundred good, and this is only ten good, or this is a thousand yeah. good, <laughs> but this is a million good. So it's like, it's like when you put everything on this number scale, it's just I don't know. It's a, it, the monkey, little monkey mind starts to go crazy, you know, and starts to say, well, oh my god, a million is a million is higher than one thousand. That means this must be a thousand times better than this, you know, and it's. Uh, this kind of calculation is it, just we spend our whole days thinking like this, you know, that uh, everything is, yeah. is all on this big long number scale, and the, the good things are the are the high numbers, the bad things are the low numbers, uh, and as you know, it's just it's a such a it's such a reductionist view of the world, and it's so dangerous because it's because it, we're thinking only about the numbers, but we're not thinking about the effects of our actions or the effects of buying this versus the effect of buying that, or how exactly. how it's going to make us how it's going to react with our bodies or uh, or you know how it's going to affect other people so we just think okay this is 20 bucks and that's 50 bucks okay i don't have 50 bucks i'm going to buy the one that's 20 bucks and that's all that, that's especially, the made you know especially the problem here is for the food supply because so yeah, many yeah. people you know are basically making their survival needs i think when i left the us the stat that i had was like something like you know Three million Americans, or no, thirty million Americans, were like one week's paycheck from homelessness. You know, yeah. and they will go no. And even I used to work as a holistic nutritional consultant, so I used to teach people how to reverse chronic degenerative disease by only putting, you know, recognizing what real food is and avoiding GMOs, and you know, working with their dosha and that kind of thing. Um, but people didn't want to have to. You go to buy an organic red cabbage and it's $15. I mean, it's like people will buy the, the junk, cheap, poisoned animal products, mm -hmm. the dairy, the chicken, the meat, and they're pummeled with all kinds of things. And they don't have any value. They actually are an anti-value. Nobody thinks about what the factory farms do to our environment. Or for example, like how much water one of those farms uses. I mean, in California, people weren't allowed to shower or wash their cars and things like this. They only use, a, but you know, Pepsi-Cola could go up right ahead and and the farms in California could, you know, all the cow farms could go right ahead and use all the water. They don't think about yeah. that kind of value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's I mean, that's, it's just a, the way everything is reduced to this number scale that basically has kind of has pretty much made us crazy. And I mean, I, 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 that's 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 actually that's actually being serious. We are really literally crazy with numbers. 
that basically we we ascribe mm -hmm. higher value to things of a higher number and lesser value to things of a lower number and that's yeah. that's how we operate this is how we've operated and uh, yeah you you're, you're so right the way you've pointed out that stuff that's free is not valued you know i mean i can again was this one thing that i used to do as a musician was giving away free cds to people and i mean and and of course people they probably don't listen to it or they throw it in the back of their car or whatever because they don't put any value to it but this is something that i maybe have spent a year working on or something like that you know so so it's, yeah it's it's a nasty system you know it is a nasty system that's true um brett i was thinking maybe uh, well you have your own question for Colin, but um, why don't I throw the question that I have and let you take it over and go yeah, over right it? But um, what what crypto what role cryptocurrency pay plays in going into a free world society? Hmm. Something along that line. Why don't you guys have that conversation? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah. The cryptocurrency is very very interesting. It's 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 a very it's a it's obviously something that can't be stopped now. It's uh, it's going to keep going and growing and all this sort of stuff. And I love the way it's um, it's been designed, or the blockchain technology has been designed that basically uh, you it, no one really can touch it or can can tamper with it. So it's a very it's a very good system in that regard. Um, but of course, all the all the sort of safeguards of the blockchain technology and the um, how Bitcoin works are really they're really nothing for me. They're nothing more than an analogy of the money system. Or like an an alternative way of doing that system. Mm -hmm. What how the, how the money system works basically with the banks is that you know that we we all have mutual trust in the banks. I trust the bank to 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 keep my money, and you trust the, your bank to keep your money. And then I send you money through through that bank because I trust them to send it to the, your bank. You know that's the way. So this kind of it's it's based on trust. You know, and what what uh, blockchain has really done is going to say, well, we don't actually need to use this. This trust system. We don't actually have to have this trust in a third party. We can basically uh, the the system itself is kind of is bulletproof more or less, and then mm -hmm. it's uh, the trust is is already built into it. Yes. But of course, this is all still um, predicate on the idea of that that we have to begin with mistrust. You know, so this is this is re the really the problem. You know, why do we have this mistrust in the first place? You know. So yeah, um, this is like it's it's a predatory culture, you know. It's kind of say, well, I mean, we're we're, we're so conditioned to think, well, is this person trying to rob from me? Or are they trying to get a get, gain an advantage over me some way? So I mean, this is how, this is why the banks kind of uh, they sort of they service that that mistrust, I suppose, in a way, or they they take that away. But you could argue that maybe having the banks doing that is a way of actually ha having people trust each other less. I say that's probably definitely conceivable but yeah the, but the the, bit, the bitcoin the bitcoin would be, seem to be a way of still kind of not really facing that bigger problem of why do we not trust each other why can't we do things together why can't we cooperate together with it without this mistrust what, what do you think brett mate i was I'm actually talking i'm thinking about what i've i was watching an interview today and uh, a guy called peter schiff and he just absolutely hates the whole idea. And he talks about what you were talking about as well. It's just going to be another bubble um, that's going to create another system that's going to fall apart eventually. He doesn't trust it at all. He wouldn't put any of his money into it. But I, I kind of, like, that was the question I was about to ask you, was I like the fact that it's kind of, I think, a, a bit of a segue to the next way of thinking. So it'll give some people an idea. And if it bubbles, it bubbles. It's not, you know, it's just giving people another way yeah. of thinking. And I, is, that, is that what you're thinking? Because I think, you know, yeah. it's, I think it's the, a good way of doing something different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the, the most important um, thing we can take away from Bitcoin or from the, that technology is the is how it enables us to 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 do away with um, reliance on central agencies so we can have like a decentralized system where we don't have to have government telling us what we can do what we can't do or banks telling us what we can do what we can't do that we can more or less transact together um on a one-to-one -one basis um without without those yeah. things and I'm, I'm pretty sure like governments and banks probably are are, are panicking over over that because uh, um, it's it's something that 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 is really their raison d'etre is is how to um, is how to provide that trust with people and and if people are starting to use Bitcoin then so so it's going to be interesting to see what will happen. I think Bitcoin and the likes they're, they're definitely not going away. They're going to get bigger and bigger. Of course, is it going yeah. to be just another bubble? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose it is. But 
I suppose that the, the crash will probably happen when maybe, uh, I don't know, if one of the technology dissolves for one or another reason, or maybe where there's just there's too many coin out there, which obviously there's thousands of them now already as it is. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think that can last. They can't have just like different coins everywhere. That doesn't seem to make sense. So I'm not really sure. No. I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't be an, I wouldn't call myself an expert by any means, but I think it's, I think the, the only thing that I think is useful is that it does actually teach us about decentralization and working peer to peer yeah. instead of uh, through third parties all the time. So I think that's, that's really good from it. Um, so first, what, actually, what, what's the um, what what's it like in Spain? Are people using Bitcoin? Because I, I found coming here to Perth, literally, I walk around and I'm not joking. Ninety nine percent of people here in Perth have never even heard of it that I've spoken to. I'm, I'm sure like, that's pretty much the same in in Spain here. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't use it myself, so I don't, I don't really um, meet anyone else who's using it. I suppose so. I'm, I'm not really going asking asking people are they using Bitcoin. So I don't know. I I don't use it myself. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm I'm considering I might start using it. Like for in in the the website, the Free World website, we do look for donations, of course, as well. We 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 try and encourage people to become patrons because obviously we have costs to run the website. That's unavoidable. So we are we're going yep. to put in the Bitcoin option there. So I guess I awesome. probably will start using. We probably will be starting to use Bitcoin option options as well soon. So no, I don't know. I don't know what the uptake of it is. Obviously, it's huge in the U.S. and probably U.K. and Northern Europe, probably more so. Yeah. Spanish people tend to be a little bit slower with the uptake new technology, <laughs> as as evidenced by any well, that, uh, bureaucratic uh, department you care to walk into. It was huge in Bali. <laughs> it was everywhere. Brett, yeah. tell them yeah, all. Yeah, absolutely. Bali. Yeah, was, yeah. Absolutely, you know that was what was the amazing thing about Ubud. Ubud actually had a beautiful community of of uh, Bitcoiners. Every week there was a, a meeting you could go to one hundred and one, so you could learn about it. But as well, they you know the idea was to organise a community, so people started using it within you um in Europe and started yeah. in Ubud. So you could you know there was restaurants and theatres and hotels and um, you know. Buy pizza, you can buy great. coffee. You know, you can you know, you do any just about fantastic. anything. That's yeah. great. And it, that's yeah, fantastic. and it, that's what everyone's like. Well, because that's it. Most people are like, well, they don't. You know, what do I do with my Bitcoin? And I'm like, well, just use it. You can use it like a normal coin. Obviously, you've got to find someone. Yeah, but of course, um, it, it may be possible that the the government may try to regulate against it, or they may try to tax it, or to. Uh, to um, I don't know. To I hear Germany is going to be the first uh, country trying to tax it. Mm, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin. Just, yeah, so well, you know, like, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, yeah. what now the hell? But actually, talk about. Have you heard about Steemit? Because that's probably something good for you as well. Yeah, Steemit, uh, Steemit is like one of these um, like patron type thing. It's a, it's a pay per view well, it's, it's, network it's, or something. Or no? well, it is, but it's more like it's kind of like Twitter. Yeah, but you get paid in Steam, which is a, a, a coin. Um, and then you okay. convert it to Bitcoin because yeah. obviously nobody's using it. You can't buy, okay, yeah. you know, you can't steam it around the world. But you buy yes, Bitcoin, yeah. then you buy steam it to to support your uh, your community within okay. within the, the Twitter kind of account because everyone yeah. promotes everyone and you pay by promoting. Um, and actually, yes. they've just okay. started up a YouTube channel as well. Well, not okay. YouTube, DTube, I think it's called. It's called DTube, yeah. Mm -hmm. DTube. Okay. So it's basically again, but it's it's all cryptocurrency. The the actual mm -hmm. the way the whole thing is set up is is uh, blockchain as well. So yeah, okay, it's interesting. Uh, you can I mean, see everyone's it's, account. It's, yep, yeah. everyone's. You can see everyone's account. You can see how much money they've got in their account. How much money they're making. Mm -hmm. um, you can like you can literally see into everyone's bank account. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, on Facebook, Facebook takes all the value off of Facebook. We. You know, and if you try to share a couple of times more than they want you to buy an ad or they block you, you know, and mm -hmm. they limit mm -hmm. who they share it to. Steam is all yeah. about community of like when it, first of all, it's all creative content. It's all supposed to be your own content, your own okay, content. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm not aware yeah. of it at all, yeah. So that's the value. The value is how many people like, but when you like it on Facebook, it doesn't have any mm -hmm. value other than how many likes you get, right? But on Steam, yeah. Yeah. the liking it is an upvote and it actually has a value of cryptocurrency. And okay, yeah, 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 and even though you can only edit it or con or that kind of thing for a week, it then is forever. It's it, it can't be pulled yeah. down like on YouTube and yeah, you know, 
any of this kind of thing and they can't block it in any way and it's it it, it gets put more in value the more people that shit that look you know respond comment mm -hmm. yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you really have the opportunity to create value in community with like-minded people mm -hmm. who like sharing each other's work and information it's it's, it's mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of conscious people techie mm -hmm. and all on it it's a really interesting I didn't like it. Yeah, but what we done very masculine yeah. here and kind of coder, but um, because it was just mm -hmm. like information. But now the val, what I'm finding on there is like boom, boom, boom. These okay, diamonds. I must, check, I must check it out. I've never looked at this. Yeah, we, we did something similar where well, not a, not a not a payment thing, but we did the honor pay thing, which is like. Uh, yeah. It's not related to any coin or money or currency or anything like that. It's basically just a way of demonstrating appreciation. It's, it's in a similar way, like you might send somebody a thank you card, for example. You know, it's just, it doesn't have any value. It's just a piece of paper. You know, but it's kind of it's a it's a way of transferring sentiment or transferring appreciation from one person to another. Yeah. But you're we, inspiring we, the practice of gratitude, which this world yeah. desperately needs a lot more of. With because so many people are coming from survival yeah. instinct and the materialism that's pushed in, you know, in the culture yeah. and this kind of. So yeah, I really exactly, love that. Because, yeah, yeah, it's good, and it's it's just a way of um, um, of sort of having a record of basically of your good deeds. I suppose if somebody is honouring you, I mean, they can they can write why or or, or or they can leave a comment or something like that. But it's just yeah. a way of saying of giving you a record, a reputation of. Of how how well you're being treated by your community or how your community views you, I think that even like in in a no. way in a way money kind of tries to do that. You know, I mean, in theory, the money the more money you make, basically, the more the more successful you are in your community, or the more you know whatever. You know, you can argue that's 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 rubbish. Of course, it is rubbish. But the point is yes. that that because the money thing is so corrupted, because that because the money that that has that value. Is also used to gain advantage and also used to um, to uh, to basically to destroy the world and to kind of trample <laughs> on other people. You know, this, you have all this this stuff associated with it. You know, it has all the collateral damage associated with it. But what this is is kind of says, well, there is some there is some good value in the like if, there is some good value in the idea of money in that it transfers appreciation. If you do me a favor, if you do like some business service for me that maybe you would charge $50 for, and I pay you $50, okay, I've given you $50 to go and buy something practical or whatever you want to use, but I've also shown you that appreciation. Yeah. I've given, I paid you the money, I said, good job, thank you, there's the money. That's the transfer of appreciation. That's a good thing. This is something that we need to preserve, and that's the one thing, the one aspect of money that I think is worth preserving, that we can still transfer that appreciation saying thank you that was a job well done or i like what you did there and i uh, put that there and what we did uh, with the honor pay thing is where it's not it's not like um it's not like a facebook like where you can just keep have millions and millions and millions of likes it's kind of it's finite because you can only actually award one honor per week to any one person yep. so that means you, you only have one honor now you don't you don't actually spend the honors that you have you get a new honor once a week and you can put that. You can send that to anybody else you want. If you don't give it to anyone, it disappears. You get a new one the next week. So the the, the system is growing all the time, and uh, it's like and because you have this finite uh, period of with which to honor somebody, then it gives the, it's, it gives it like a value that you can only do this to one person within seven days, yeah. and uh, so that's that's what gives it the value. Because if, if you didn't have that, for example, then I could send like ten thousand honors. I could. To to people, which would render the value, it would render it valueless. You know. Yeah. So the point is that it yeah, has yeah. a value. That it's seven days maximum, and then you can send one out, and then you and uh, that's all. So it's you know, uh, it's going very well. You know, it's really interesting about what you just said, though, because if you gave ten thousand, it would, would be valueless. Um, what was interesting, I remember back um, when the internet first came out, or I got on the internet anyway, and Napster was out, and that was where everybody could get music for free. And what actually, everybody said didn't have any, but actually had a tremendous value. What had value on Napster when it was free because you didn't have to pay anything was what was downloaded the most, what people wanted the most. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah. Isn't that? Yeah, that, yeah. 
Of course, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of from the other point of view. Yes, yeah, so that was like a, a like a voting system, if you like. You know, whatever they the, all the all the users of Napster were voting for the best song or whatever on on that yeah. point of thing. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about on honor pay. I'm talking about from the amount of you, the amount that you can send out, the amount of honors you can transmit is very very limited. You can only do one every seven days, so whatever, like fifty two honors per year, and that's all. No yeah. one, you, you can't do any more than that, which means that that um, somebody isn't sending out $10,000 to somebody and somebody's only sending one a year. And like, you know, it's like, it would totally distort the system. So it's just a way of making it fair. But that's, uh, that's, um, yeah. that's like I say, it's the, the one, one aspect of money that I think is worth preserving is that transference of appreciation and gratitude, you know? Because I think that, that has to be, that has to be, uh, has to, it's part of our, our culture. You know, you have to be able to like pat on the back or whatever, high five. Or whatever you know, the, the, these things are really, really important. I agree. Aspects of our society. Ah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, so yeah, Go ahead, Brent. Well, I'm I'm just talking about value, and I'm just looking at your map system at the moment. The free will still in beta. Tell us, tell us about that, because as as you're talking and I'm watching it, I've got such bad internet here. Slowly, things are popping up on the map. And like I'm getting a, everyone was an orange person, which I'm guessing are people. Now I've just had a spanner turn up and I can go and get a free Reiki session down further, about 30 kilometers away. Oh, Tell that's us cool. how the map works. Yeah, with uh, like I said, all the people who have signed the charter and then they've gone on to activate their accounts on the free world, or you have to, you have to actually make the step if you are char if you're charter signatory, you have to continue make the step because we have to set up the profile for people. Um, the profile is interesting. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But basically, you go in and um, once you've once you've finished your registration, then you can go and uh, post a listing. You can post an ad. You can your ad can be an offer. It can be a request. It can be for a skill or for a service. And um, that's just all at the wow. moment. But eventually, we're, we're or pretty soon we're going to be adding like accommodation, room sharing, tool sharing, uh, tool libraries, that sort of stuff. Where these these are all coming very fast. So, um, so at the moment, basically, it's yeah, it's you can advertise anything that you want to give away for free, whether it's a good or a services, or you can request anything for for free, and then you just post it, post a picture of what the, what you're giving away or what you want, and then the details, and then there's a little box underneath, and people can can con contact you about that. Um, what's interesting about the the profile sign up that I was going to mention was that um, we we've, we've kind of created this. Well, it's not really a revolutionary idea, but it's it's a very very interesting idea that you don't get on Facebook, and it's a thing called an iTag system. That basically, when you go on to to create your profile, you're invited to write down a series of tags that describe you. For example, you could write a footballer, a vegan, or artist, or musician, or um, anything that relates to you. Like you could write dogs if you love dogs, or you could write um, you know. Uh, Salvador Dali, if you like, if you like Salvador Dali, you could write anything that that is that is close to you, you know, within your 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 consciousness, you know. And it takes and, a lot of tags. Yeah. I put a lot in. <laughs> and, and the beauty of that is that once you once you do that, when people do that, then we can start. Um, people can start uh, um, finding other people with similar interests very very easily. We can just uh, we're going to, uh, another feature we're going to add is like a, a match me feature where it'll search for people within a certain area that actually have similar or close in or close eye tags to you. So it's a matching the, the tags thing, and then of course that also helps us to to ma uh, automatically match people with products or with goods and services that are available on the on the website as well. That's so we can if people are interested in. You know, like health, health food, or uh, healthcare, or something like that. We can, and anyone who's advertising something like that, who also uses healthcare in the tag, this will find its way to you. So it's a way of not just matching people with the things that, and the skills that they're interested in, but also matching people with people. It, it, we're hoping eventually it could even be used for dating. It could be a dating site where you can actually find uh, possibly romantic partners or whatever you want. This is all possible. So uh, it's really yeah. only just getting beginning, but like the the amount the the possibilities here are enormous. You know, so it's, we're very excited about that. Yes. Question: yeah, I didn't absolutely. look, I didn't notice or try yet because I've been in Prague. Um, I think it was just two weeks ago. I switched over a week or two. Um, but it's like I'm a pretty much a location independent person. I'm based mostly out of Bali. Bali is like my home, but I, I'm on a yeah. little. Uh, 
jaunt around traveling for for months and i'm going to be changing so if, could i put something here in prague till i leave on the 22nd and then i can change my city where i'm going to next and put something on there or is of course. it just no wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Your, your your listings uh, your listing location is independent of your of your fixed location i mean if you if you saved your location at bali for example um, well, when if you're in Prague, you can actually click on current location, and it'll show you the stuff that's close to you. But if you want to post a listing in Prague, then you can you can um, you, you create a listing, and then you can just go to the map, and you can move the marker from Bali, which is where it will be by default, and uh -huh. move it to move it to Prague or something like that. So then the, the, awesome. the listing will the listing will appear to be in centered in Prague. I mean, yeah, yeah, of course, you can move it again later as well if you want. So you can Wonderful. Move. Yeah, no, I was curious about that when I was signing up, and um, I'm glad we got to this point here now because I'm like, oh, do I want to sign up in Bali or should I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course, if you if you have a skill or service that you want to offer that um, can be done over the internet or over the phone, yeah, then you you have the option to say that it's available anywhere. So uh, it doesn't, doesn't in that case it doesn't matter where you list it. If you like, a lot of people actually are offering proofreading. I see quite a few people offering that. Which uh -huh. is very useful, but um, of course you can do that by internet, so that doesn't have to be somebody down the road. That can be somebody on the, on the other side of the world. So, so it's, yeah. yeah, you can set your location to anywhere, or you can set the that it's available anywhere. I love so, it. The gift yeah. it's 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 revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is really. It literally Absolutely. is. But it's we're like say we're crawling at the moment. It's going. It's, it's we're we're getting it slowly. We're at a, like a, a stage where we're seeding the site. Really, we're trying to encourage people to put it put up listings up there. Together, but we haven't done like a, a big public launch or anything like that yet. Probably that won't come maybe till January or something like that. You know, we just want to try and get the thing, get a lot of people, uh, get a lot of stuff on there, really. You know, because once we go for a big launch, I mean, we can't we can't have a big launch and then people go and there's nothing on the site. We have to have the site that's pretty like busy, a lot of stuff going on there already before we start getting uh, a lot of people on there. Yeah. No, but I so love how it. many people are on the team. Um, well, there's, there's, there's two of us working on the free worlder, there's two of us working on the promotion, uh, there's, there's also there's a load of other people, maybe about 20 people who are kind of helping sort of in, on and off um, when they can or where they can. But it's pretty, it's basically a small team, there's, a, there's, a, there's myself, uh, there's a girl from Scotland who's helping out with publicity. Uh, there's a guy in um, Philadelphia who's helping with the, the tech side and with customer service. And um, a few other people scattered around. Of course, it's, I'm getting uh, people are helping out with translations as well and stuff like that. So it's good. So uh, yeah, nice. but it's 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 a small team, and uh, like I say, we're we're doing everything more or less on a voluntary basis, you know. So um, the more the more if the more donations we can get, the easier it will be for us to be able to um, to keep the site ticking over, and of course to pay for the the, the running costs. At the moment, we're yeah. we're more or less meeting the meeting the costs of it but that's about all you know we need to be able to um to actually to bring the site more make more financially viable to be able to progress the site more you know so that's where all but it's just yeah. it's a slow it's a slow game it's going to take um possibly a couple of years really before this site gets up to what it can be you know so it's uh, like so we're just crawling at the moment and uh yeah. crawling very happily i have to say so actually while we're talking about that shall we Give people a link that we can send them to your. Is it Patreon? Is that what you're using at the moment? No, no. Uh, just go to the the freeworlder.com site. The, 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 yeah, um, I have those links already in the info. They're already yeah, there. Yep. I have the charter for people to sign. Yep. I have the free worlder for them to join, mm -hmm. and I have the link yep. for your book. Speaking of your book, yeah. Um, I was going to actually throw out the question because you know the title of the show is "Imagine a World Without Money." What that would look mm -hmm. like. Um, sure. Talk about that, or do you want to just do it via your book? Because uh, oh, the course. second dawn of man is is your. Book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a couple of. Them here. I was gonna say, I did, uh, yeah, hold it up. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did this That's one. Um, this is kind of like the product of maybe uh, three years' work or so, uh, on and off. It's 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 basically a, a novel. Excuse me. Um, it's a novel that, um, like, I've been working on uh, on and off for, for three years. I just released there last year, 
and it's done very very well it's got really good reviews on amazon which is like amazing for me because i never wrote i never wrote a novel before it's the first one i did so uh, i was kind of uh, winging it a bit and uh, getting a bit of help from people but it's actually it's it's really paid off and it's it's really really um well i won't tell you it's selling well because it isn't really but <laughs> it's basically being very very well received and it's been very very well reviewed of course it's a self-published from my own point of view so i don't have a big uh, army of guys who are so, I mean, sales are okay. It's going yeah. okay, but uh, it's going to be part of a trilogy. I'm going to do um, two more of these. Um, I'm actually working on the audio version at the moment. Actually, I have, um, awesome. have a, like a studio set up here for my music, my musical days, and uh, putting it to good work and uh, putting the the, um, the audio thing, which is actually really sounding really not really nice, and that, that's going to be open up to another new audience as well. And the, the, book, Lovely. the book basically uh, is like a countdown dramatization starting from, say, today, this day, and then counting down to a time when the world says, okay, that's it, we're not you, we're stopping using money from now. And that's what F day is. F day is the day, day zero, when we kind of say, okay, so we're not, we're, we're going to change, so we're not going to use money, your money is no longer valid. So this is, uh, this is what, and it, it really was a, it was a challenge to write it, I can tell you, in a lot of ways, because um, it challenged a lot of my own ideas. It forced me to um, to think things through better, you know, to to uh, to refine the way the ideas that I had originally from the charter, you know. So, really, the way I'm, the way I think now about it versus the way I think when I was like did the charter some years ago is really, really quite different, you know. So, but this is good. It's like it's uh, the ideas are, are evolving. And because because I um, more or less had to change a lot of that, not change the ideas, but I had to sort of refine the ideas, and I kind of made some discoveries in a way, because the surprising thing is about writing a novel is that even though it's completely fictional, it's completely dramatization, but you still have to make it plausible. It's still, it, it has to be believable. It has to be plausible. Yep. So this forces you to actually to make it plausible and to make a case for it, saying how does this work. So, so that forced me to think through things a bit. And then the offshoot of that was this, which was basically um, a very small. This is a very skinny little book, very tiny. Um, after writing the F Day book, uh, I had all these other ideas that were kind of were, were like augmenting the ideas that I'd had about it, uh, the money free world, and uh, also. Um, we're dealing with a lot of the practical issues like like prisons, for example, you know, what do you do with prisoners? Like building hospitals, how do you build hospitals? Like um, central government, how do you how do you plan things centrally? Um, how do you get people to engage with community tasks? How do you get people to sweep the roads? All this kind of stuff, you know? So I mean, these, these kind of practical issues which I dealt with in the novel, I felt were um, mm -hmm. really important. So I decided to put the sort of a, these ideas into this very very short book which is actually you can get this as a free download on Amazon actually it's called into the open economy and uh, this is really good this is actually this has got like a few thousand downloads now already so it's really really good and um, uh, if you're obviously this uh, this book this book is for sale I think it's about 15 bucks or something like that but if you're interested in the idea download this for free from Amazon and um, if you like that maybe you're, you would like the novel but uh, this book at the open like economy has already it's been um, it's been translated into like six languages already as well. So it's really it's really done very well, and it's it's uh, it's very very simple to understand. It's not technical. It's not um, it's not boring. I hope, and it basically just puts out a very very practical common sense approach to actually how these things would actually play out in the real world. You know? So uh, that's if you're if you're if you're new to these ideas, you're looking for somewhere to start. I would definitely recommend um, that book to download. You know, you can grab it from Amazon. And um, like I say, it's in a, it's in French, German, Spanish, Czech, and Portuguese. I think that's all now at the moment. But it, it's going very well. So yeah, I'm very very happy with the books. Um, it's it's been a great uh, learning experience for me to be able to um, to refine the ideas and to a new audience. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with those. Well, you've taken on a ginormous challenge, which is to help. Uh, the people of the world revisit yeah. the self-limiting belief that we have to pay to live here and that we're on, our only value is how much of that worthless paper that we possess on our body. And what, the biggest underlying key of all of it is money 
you know, and there's, I've revisited this many, many different, I came from a family that was filled with poverty consciousness um, and how they perceived everything. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I actually, all I, even as a child, I remember thinking that all I was was dollars and cents to my parents and I was a burden. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what, how little I had, you know, yeah. um, and it was, yep. you know, no, no, you can't use the good china. No, 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 you can't wear your good clothes. No, no you know, you can't ever use anything that's nice. You you have to have one, but you can't use it. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, Actually, we, had, we had a classic example of the the Greeks and Italians in Australia would have a have one of those as a lounge room. Mm -hmm. Like it always had everything beautiful, but you can't go in there. You never go in there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, I'll be like that. yeah. Can you? I I've actually just put the link up for yeah. um for the Amazon link, yeah. but I can't put it oh, into. I, I, yeah, I can't put it into uh, the chat box on live on YouTube. It won't let me do it. So, do you want to do it now? The so, chat. Box. I, uh, I don't. I don't know. Do you know how to do that, Lisa? Sorry, I don't know how to do that. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll do it. Hold on one sec. Okay, cool. But I, I, I don't just know. Yeah, we had to, uh, I, like, I like to get the links up while we're doing it. Keep people yeah. fresh so they can click on it straight away. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. I, good idea. Yeah, I know some people as well who had this um, this lounge room, yeah, with all the, the silver and the, 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 the china teacups and everything laid out there. And the, the, yeah. the mother of the house would go in and dust dust everything once a week, you know, but it was like a, it was like a shrine yeah. to a shrine it's to right. books, I don't know. I don't know what it was like. It was this 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 holy place that oh my god, you can look but you can't touch and you have to come out quickly because you yeah, yeah, yeah. Or wait, wait, that's wait that's for the, that's my parents they they used to have Sometimes there's plastic. There was relatives that would have plastic over their furniture, so yeah. You yeah. <laughs> and you had to sit in this yucky plastic, <laughs> uncomfortable, squeaky, sweaty, sticky thing. But um, where I was going with that was that what people don't realize is that even though the paper we exchange as money has no value, intrinsically it has a tremendous amount because basically what us humans do on this planet. Is exchange our life force and our, which is mm -hmm. transcribed as our time, um, for money, and we can't. We yeah, can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that's the huge thing, and the sh the shift that your your book and your projects and all of this is doing is like a um, stories as medicine uh, version of how we go there and how to even put because you know there's the words like history. Her story, people talked about. I like the our story, and yours mm -hmm. is really about our story. Mm -hmm. It's about balance and just being in your natural and nature. Things don't. I mean, you don't see squirrels going out and trying to have too many acorns stocked for the winter. They just take what they need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And of course, we're 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 all very deeply imbued with this um, this misconception that once you take away money or take away law, that we all suddenly start going crazy and start killing each other and and doing all these crazy things, which is absolutely not true. I mean, it's like a, it's like um, we're we're led to believe that we're our, the default our default behavior is violence and and greed yeah. and attack. But this is this is absolutely not not the case at all. You know, our default behavior is to, you know, if if all the power goes off or if all the money the banks close or all the shops close something like that, we all we all start talking among our neighbors and we go and we we help and we go to solve we solve problems. I mean, that's. That's what the 99.9% .9 of people will do, you know. You will, of course, get yeah. some people who maybe will will try and find a gun or will try and, and do something extreme like that. This is, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny minority of people. You know, most, people most people just want to get on, get on with people. They want to help each other out. They want to, they, they want to yeah. accept help if they can, and they want to just try and cooperate and solve problems, you know. I mean, imagine, yeah. look, in any, we've all been in the situation where – there was like a, a huge snow or where there was a huge power cut or outage or there was some a huge, huge flooding, you know, whereas where basically everyone is just suddenly brought flooding stops and they, people are coming out of the houses saying, what the fuck, are, what are we, we going to do now? Like Houston. And, <laughs> That's yeah. Houston and we don't, and we, right we, don't start, we don't start clubbing each other and say, well, I'm going to run, going to steal your TV now or, you know, we don't start behaving like, like, uh, like lunatics. We actually start behaving more yeah. civilized. We actually start saying, "Well, here, let me get your hand with that, or let me help you with this person, or let me do that." And, you know, this is—it's absolutely normal behavior, and it, it unfortunately it takes us to get to this, those kind of crisis moments before we actually really realize it. 
But we're, of yeah. course, we're constantly fed this image of uh, what they call anarchy on uh, on TV, which is they, they like to call anarchists, who are people who are throwing petrol bombs at police. I'm an anarchist. Cars. <laughs> but this is this is the thing, you know, and that's why anarchy is like a, is a dirty word, you know. It's been completely soiled. Yeah. The media is completely misrepresented. Absolutely. I, I think I even said it in the Open Economy book that actually it's it's been so damaged that word that I, I don't even try to use it. It's actually it's just it's too far gone in people's minds, consciousness. It's like um, it's it's just yeah. a dirty like word. So it's not even useful anymore. <laughs> conspiracy yeah, theory yeah, yeah, yeah. is equal to mentally mentally mm. ill or a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, it's 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 frightening to see how how easily like the media use that and mis misrepresent that word over and over again. I've seen it so many times that it's to be. I don't know about you, Lisa or Brett, but I actually I gave up watching TV about four or five years ago, and I and years sometimes ago. sometimes when I'm in yeah. a situation and there's a, a TV in the room, I'm like I'm absolutely shocked by the by the it's horror and the crap that's coming from it. You know? Yeah. It's on it. So it's really yeah. it's, it's tough. So, so that's um, probably another good question. I'm thinking about that as you're saying yeah. it now. What do you think the you know the mainstream media are going to come up with an idea of what you're trying to do? Because mm. you know, able socialists or you know your commies or you know whatever yeah. that kind of idea because you're trying to do everything for free and you know, all this kind of bullshit. As we know, it's rubbish. Yeah, but, but um, this, this are happens. you ready yeah. for that kind of stuff? Yeah, those yeah, crazy just... people. God has forbid anything be free. <laughs> no, that would just well, this, I think this is this one of the things that the media is expert at. One of the things that they try to do well is they want to to pigeon. Oh, sorry. They want to pigeonhole you as soon as possible. You know, so you're either an yeah. anarchist or you're a terrorist. You're a socialist. You're a, I don't know a, a capitalist or, or or whatever word. They try to pigeonhole. You as quickly as possible because they want a nice headline you know he said oh like a uh, anarchist guy from spain talks about you know this this uh, money a world with no money you know and this is kind of it's leading you into a um and into a different dialogue you know so yeah unfortunately that's going to be one of, the, one of the hazards of it and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it um irresponsible journalism is absolutely rife uh, we could just yeah. hope that, that basically like it's fake news, just like they did with fake news. You know, who created fake news, or even that Snopes site? Who decided that Snopes is the the, mm -hmm. the one to go to to find out what the truth is? <laughs> I, I I find so much on that site absolutely ridiculous propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know about it, yeah. but um, yeah. So I know we we, it's, we have we have all this. Yeah, I mean, social media has now presented this problem because social media was fantastic when it started off. It was a really great way for us all to meet up. But now we have this absolute barrage of conflicting ideas and conflicting messages, which I th I, I can only I can only um, predict that maybe the the future of that is that people will just switch off from it. People will just say, look, this is just. This is just like Rubbish. static. This well, that's is noise. the whole behind the trolls. And, but I think I think that's, that's what people. That's that's the way people are going. They kind of say, "Well, look, this is this can't be trusted." As um, the, even the internet in general is starting to be become a mistrusted source of information. You know, so uh, I know it's, it's difficult. It's difficult Actually, to know where to go. But so, so yeah, social yeah. media in particular is obviously the it's like the the focus point for all this stuff where people are, are putting out wrong ideas. And uh, this is, I don't know, it's irresponsible, actually. Um, um, so even, so even some of the people who are sort of espoused like organic stuff or uh, natural living, some of these sites are also dodgy as well. They're not, yeah. they're not really telling you the truth either. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you like this guy, uh, uh, Avocado Wolf, or whatever the hell his name is. I mean, he David, seems to be a David bit of a... Wolf, a, bit of a Madonna, yeah seems to be a bit dodgy in some ways, you know, but again, I don't know. So, I mean, it's hard to know which, who's telling the truth, who's not telling the truth. So, uh, it's 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 difficult. It's a difficult one to call how that's actually going to pan out, whether we're going to be, um, we're obviously going to be pulling uh, pulling away from social media more and more because more people are just going to be turned off by the conflicting messages, as Maybe it is. the whole intention. I, I mean, just in your free worlder group on Facebook, I put, shared my, um, a couple of, I think the first radio show that we started up live on YouTube about the birth certificate uh, bond accounts, and then also another show uh, with either Santos Bonacci, just about the whole system and, you know, attached to our legal name fraud and our 
bonds and how all that, you know, the governments print the money out of thin air based on how much money they're going to steal from us in our lifetime. And they never give any of it to us. And they always charge us double, even though they're getting paid out of the bond, that kind of thing. But um, a couple of the posts, I attracted a troll in your group. His name is... Oh, okay. Uh, yes, Pettybone. And he, as soon as we went live, I started seeing him commenting on it. I'm like, he won't. Oh, good. But people like that, I used to have a lot of that. And there, there, there are some people who have like no life and nothing better to do than get into arguments on Facebook. I don't deny that. I've experienced mm -hmm. that as well. I think that, yeah. time, I've had so many trolls for so many years now, and it was a lot worse in the beginning, um, especially because I was one of the first people really talking about like satanic pedophiles and legal name fraud and that kind of mm -hmm. thing when it was it, what hadn't really been yeah. much heard of at all, even in the online kind of truther community. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Like with him, they the these the vast majority. I think I saw the number of over eight hundred thousand agents, people hired by the CIA for COINTELPRO. They're just supposed to go on and and find, look. They have search bots that pull them mm. to people in conversations to see what's going on yeah. because their whole point is to either be obnoxious, you know, and rude mm. and cruel to scare you or harass you or. But the, it's all about creating distraction. To get people from having mm -hmm. a conversation and getting to the end, I've got. Well, that 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 sounds interesting, but it's probably far more likely just somebody with nothing better to do. No, there's probably. that too. I, I stated that. that <laughs> first time. I, I, but I know I upload I, I, videos of like one of my one of my radio show guests was a woman who's the mom of the Hamps was called the Hampstead Whistleblower Kids, but they're now known as Free the Hampstead Two, and her children. Um, she doesn't, she's not married to the father and she only has them two weeks a year. A couple of years ago came out and told about how their dad was the head of a pedophile ring at their church and murdering babies and making them drink their blood and, and all the adults molesting them and all these other special children. Um, but I've been trolled to be Jesus by those people. And a lot of them are the same people in the cult and they just keep changing names and they have this exact kind of energy and, and yeah, talk. It has yeah, nothing yeah, to yeah. do with it. They're yeah. just trying to make no one pay attention. And they say, yeah. I'm, a pedophile. I'm a satanic pedophile, and I'm really, you know, trafficking children, and, and I'm the one drinking blood and doing moon, full moon rights, and blah, 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 blah. They have the entire website well, have, dedicated to I, it. I have, a, I, have a, I have a pretty healthy attitude to trolls. I don't mind them being on there because they help with the, the post ranking. You know, the more crap they post the more the higher it up goes up in people's uh, news feeds yeah. so that's fine bring it bring it on and of course they make themselves very obvious you know with their yeah. spewing hate spewing hatred and uh, pouring vitriol and what they're saying and i yeah. know sometimes they have they have a point I, I it doesn't bother me at all really anymore let people say what they want you know yeah. no me stuff. either actually i don't i i only take i only don't let them when they're just spewing hate mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or they're yeah. being bullying, or they're talking about gays, or whatever. You know, whatever it is, they're trying to say that you're supposed to judge somebody for. I only, I just don't yeah. like the hate speech. But no, I agree <laughs> you. They, they give you, they give you more attention, and they take enough rope to hang themselves. And any, yeah. just the way they carry themselves, anyone who has their own mind or an mm. open mind, at least, note can decide. Yeah, decide yeah, yeah. Like, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good. They're, they I are mean, helpful for post yeah. on, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, look, I have to I have to go back to it because we're we're doing a meeting on the website now in about fifteen minutes, and uh, we're putting actually it's quite exciting. We're putting in a. Um, I, I, I know Brett was looking at the site there. It's all all you have at the moment is like a map with markers. Um, yep. Which is really really good, but um, people a lot of people have asked for like a, just a, a straightforward listing, like a grid listing, so you can actually see yeah. the closest things, the most relevant, which you can't really see on the map. So this is something yep. we're working we're working on now, actually, uh, hoping to have it ready in in, uh, in a week's time or something like that. So we're just gonna and, have. And a, a new... just... Yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say just one little yep. suggestion. It, I was I was it took me a while to find the donation button. Make it bigger. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> gonna have the biggest donation button you've ever seen. <laughs> no, that's okay. it's right down the actually... bottom. I'm like, I'll become a free will patron. I'm like, ah, there it is. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Again, good. Yeah, I'm glad. Thanks for the suggestion. That's yeah, that's probably a good idea. Actually, my pleasure, brother. Hmm. I yeah, love no, your work. I, um, I can't wait. I'll join yeah. up myself. Yeah. We will definitely um, get this out to as many people. Is yeah, there any so other things you want to? So you've yeah. got the um, freewallet.com. 
Yeah, if um, what else is there you want to promote? In a, in a, well, basically, in a nutshell, if you're if you're new to this idea, the whole idea of a money thing, the first thing is you can go to the Free World Charter. Obviously, it's you can go through the ten points, and if you you agree with them all, you can sign the charter. That's a great way of supporting. That's the way most people support. The second thing is is get this book. Uh, you've no excuse because it's completely free to download on Amazon. Uh, you can get a Kindle. Obviously, the paperback version costs money because it's a physical product, so we can't give that away for free. But the the the, the download the version on Amazon and do read that. It's a really really good book. Uh, and it's not just me saying that because it's been really really highly reviewed, and a lot of people have have complimented me that it's actually it's put the the ideas so succinctly and in a way that's really very easy to understand and digestible. And, and very obvious, really, <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's it's obvious. I mean, it's, it's, if you try to describe, if you try to describe a money system, how does the money system? What the, the way we're doing now? You try yeah. to describe that to, you know, to anyone. It's so vastly complicated. It's ridiculously yeah. complicated. You know, like somebody has to make this amount of money, but they have to make tax from that, and then they have to make profit from that, and then it's, you know, it's. But it's, it's to actually to explain a society where look we just help each other out we share things we do, and and things get better that way, and uh, this is like it. say a six year old six year old can figure it out but like uh, but a thirty year old adult has no idea. You know? <laughs> so this well, is this well, is this is, this is where we're at. Deal, you know the deal with that man. You know the deal, and it, what it is is you're open minded when you're a child and you become this yeah. closed box because too much shit's getting yeah, inside exactly. your head. Yeah, I mean, I think I often think I, I talk with my wife about this a lot because the two of us are very passionate about the idea of uh, a, a re changing the education system because the education system is well, that, let's not even go there because it's just an absolute red blot in my in my consciousness. But basically, we often say we should reverse the education system, put the tip, put the children at the top of the class, and put the adults at the desks. I think that would be much more productive. <laughs> They are our teachers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the, yeah, learn. We have this idea that learning is a one-way process. You know, I teach, you learn. This is ridiculous. You know, learning Absolutely. is completely circular. It's always been circular. You know, it's uh, yeah. So anyway. That's why I love the multi-age classrooms. Um, the thing. Yeah, and multi-age classroom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. in the book as well. Yeah, do. Anyway, please, if you're interested in those ideas, do check out the the book. I think you'll like it. Anyway. Okay, but look, awesome. that's it. Thanks a million, like Lisa and Brett, for having me on. It's been a fantastic. Man, I haven't done an interview you. in a while, so I've, 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 I've been so busy with the website that we haven't done any interviews. But I'm hoping to to start doing more now in the next few months. You know, so this has been a, like a another uh, another. Uh, a relaxing change for me. So thank you very much. Better. Good. No, it's wonderful to have you and everyone um, listening um, uh, live or the the playback. We have all your links to Free Worlder, um, to sign the charter, charter. book down uh, down there, and I will go ahead and add the Open Economy free download in there as well um, oh, when we do the press. So we'll let you go to your meeting. Just if you recall, we have one practice as we say goodbye, um, sure. and that is um, to say what we're grateful for. So I always start with the guests. Okay, what me? I'm very, very happy and grateful to be alive, to be alive at this in a very important and interesting time, and just to be alive anyway, it's great to be alive, being dead was so boring, it's great to be alive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You never would have got your website done. <laughs> I know, yeah. This is what I always say, life is power, you know, that you can't do anything when you're dead, so you may as well just do something while you're here, you know. It's uh, it, it breaks my heart a little to hear of people who are who, who are depressed, you know, people who are who can't get out of the bed, and people that I think it's I don't know it's I know it's I can't understand the way they're feeling, but uh, it's such a shame to be to have this life force and to be able to to be paralyzed, not to be able to do anything because of uh, depression. So that, sorry to end on a bad note, but uh, I don't know. It's just, it's I've always been thinking that life is is, a, is such a wonderful gift, such a wonderful force, and it's great to use it in in any way you can, you know, which you guys are doing, and it's wonderful to see that. So thank you for that. Wonderful, thank you, Colin, and thanks again for being a guest again. We'll have you back later as you start to expand to get you when you go live, especially in the help you get okay. the vote out. And I know I will go on and do some offerings in there and see see what, what other people are doing. Oh, yeah. to help you. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Brett, thanks again, sweetie. And that's okay. Colin Turner, the creator and founder of the uh, Free World Charter as well as the freeworlder.org, which is, uh, from my knowledge, the first free gift economy um, platform on the, on the internet in the world. 
Uh, nice. Brett, what are, you, what are you grateful for? Oh, I forgot to say author of F Day and the, uh, Into the Open Economy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, F day you can, you can find it on Amazon. I, I so better they, not write. I better not do anything else in the next two years, Lisa, because you're going to spend your whole hour introducing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, people are losing their uh, their time their time uh, constraint uh, limitation. Okay. I mean, the show used to be two or three hours, and now we try to keep it to an hour. Yeah, but that's even good. that's been a challenge sometimes. So I don't know. I don't think people have the kind of time anymore. But um, yeah. anyway, what are you grateful for today, Brett? Stop. Um, I'm grateful for. Um, you know, because I I kind of um, was working in Bali, a few things changed. I came to Perth for a week just to, you know, do a visa run. And, uh -huh. you know, like having such good friends. Like I've been staying at this friend's house now for three weeks while I'm trying to get a job. And actually a husband's trying to get me a job where he works. And, um, and you know, you know, when you stay with somebody, and you kind of feel like you're starting to, you know, get in the way. And I'm like, am I getting in the way? And she's like, no, don't be silly. Like, we love it that you're here. The kids love you being here. Like, you know, I, like I'm picking up the kids at work and I'm, I mean at the work at school yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and dropping them off while she's busy doing other things. So she loves it. And we've been friends for 20 or 30 years now. So I'm grateful just for having really good old friends that you can just yeah. turn up on their doorstep and take a bed up. And they don't kick you out. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing the free thing now. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah, kids get to get live on YouTube too. They didn't this week. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what am I grateful for? I I have I actually have so much to be grateful for right now. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple and say I'm grateful that I have the next place that I know that I'm going to in my journey uh, here from Prague. I'm going to the heart chakra of the, the planet Earth to Glastonbury. I'm going to go juju up the heart chakra and go meet some friends online and some other actives. I'm going in your own home territory there, Colin. I'll be all over Scotland and Ireland. So I'm really oh, grateful fantastic. for the opportunity to go out and meet people, yeah. meet various people that I've only known online as well as go see Great. beautiful places and, and fellow humans all, that I'm running into all the different cultures all over the world. I'm immensely fantastic. grateful to have, to have the, the capacity to be able to live location independently and literally go where I want and check Great. out bits and pieces yeah. of what And you like. doctor, use, use the site, use the site to try and to try and arrange accommodation for yourself. That's what, that's what it's for, you know? I mean, I, I, we, did, we went, myself and my wife went traveling some years ago with a similar site. We were the uh, finding surfing. people on the, on the map. Yeah, kind of couch surfing, but we did it with the free worlders, you know, like uh, the, the original, original version of the site that you see today, there was an older version of it. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, so. I mean, if you're if you're looking for somewhere to Wonderful. stay, go and look up some people on the site where you're going. Yeah. Well, perfect. I, I just booked for Glastonbury for the month, but I, I I'm literally going by the seat of my pants. I have no Great. goal till at least next spring. Um, perfect. Yes, you so, do. Yeah, I'll Free world the site. Com. That's your. That's your. Yeah, keep it going. Keep it going. Okay, okay, guys. I have to go. Thank Thanks you. a million for talking. It's lovely to see you again, Lisa. Lovely to meet you. Again, Lisa. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody get over to thefreeworlder.org and we'll see you next Wednesday. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Colin. Bye.